Hi YouTube. Um, I'd just like to show you another control that I've been working on. That's uh, a completely new design. It's good for 100 amps um, quite easily. It'll actually go up to about 160 amps technically. But being a motor controller, the feedback diodes will only handle about 100 amps. I could possibly change it in the future if I want to, I guess. But um, for the time being, there is much need to. I don't really want to go much further than 100 amps. Um, 12 volts input to 48 volts input. Also 12 volt output to 48 volts output. Uh, it'll do 100% PWM. So if you put in 12 volts, you'll get out 12 volts. Likewise for 36 or 48 volts. The frequency of this unit is adjustable between 150 hertz and approximately 1.5 kilohertz. It's got two soft start options on it. It can either be about um, uh, roughly about 1.5 seconds to 3 seconds. Um, or you can remove it entirely. I'll run through that as I show it to you. And it can be controlled by either a Hall Effect throttle or a potentiometer. But not both at the same time because the Hall Effect has a voltage differential. It works from about 0 0.8 volts to 4.5 whereas the pot will work from um, 0 to 5 volts. It can be adjusted by the start, so you can adjust the start position of either the potentiometer or the throttle. You can have the throttle and the potentiometer connected at the same time and just switch between them on the board. Uh, it's got highly efficient MOSFET drivers. And um, the gate switching on this is very, very fast. It's under about, um, under about oh, one point. 1.6 microseconds, which for four MOSFETs is incredibly quick. But um, this is the pretty much the a new build. We started off with this board, which is much smaller, but um, as with everything, the very first time you build it, you're bound to have problems in one way or another. Then we went on to this type of board which wasn't bad, but um, I still needed some work. Went onto this board, which was a bit more complex, added a few more features, but uh, it always came back to the MOSFETs being switched by an op amp. Because of that, the rise and fall times of the MOSFETs were just massive. They're up around three to four microseconds. Rather than go down that road again, I just thought, well, why not just completely redesign the thing? This is a prototype board. Um, I get basically everything these days properly PCB'd up. Uh, I just find it much easier to work with rather than breadboards. I showed in my last video how I use breadboards but I burnt them out all the time. Yeah, it was just a pain. Um, doing it this way, I, I think. Uh, it's much easier to prototype something when it's complete, when it's easy to put together rather than having a sort of an assortment wires. But in saying that, I mean, um, look, not everything goes to plan. Sometimes I overlook things or I forget things or whatever. And uh, this is kind of the result. This is another controller I'll probably show in another video. But um, look, it. it yeah, this is what happens when you don't read data sheets properly and you have to make pretty severe modifications to things. This is just a mess of extra components, jumper wires, blown tracks. But um, that's all up and running now. I'll show that probably sometime later. But um, let me show you this thing. A little bit worried about these wires because these wires from the power supply are only good for about uh, really about 20-25 amps so it's not that high but it's just to show you how it all works so it's not too extreme alright everything's hooked up and let's power it up we can 
can switch it on and off by the switch quite simply. Um, I haven't put switches on previous designs. Uh, I really didn't think they were required, but um, some customers actually prefer to have a switch on there. So for this one, I just went out and bought switches and put those in. We can also switch to the hall effect just by changing the jump on the board. It's just a basic hall effect throttle. And, um, yeah, I'll show you this under some, some load as well. Um, what I'll do, I'll hook up a, actually I'll show you the soft start feature. Basically from the, the time you switch it on, um, just enable the potentiometer and make sure it's all up and running. Okay, so we set the motor at a certain speed. Select which soft start we want. Turn it off. Wait for it to power down. Click it back on and um, it'll slowly ramp up to the speed. You've got two settings. That one we just showed was the first setting. This one is the second setting. As you can see, it takes a lot longer. Or we can just plain remove the jumper, go straight to full power as soon as it well. Whatever you set it at, it goes straight to that um, that adjustment level. All right. I'll show you this with um, a bit of current limiting at the moment. You could use this for either HHO use or you could use it for DC motors. It really doesn't matter what you use it for. Uh, let's see. My high quality wire link here. This power supply is only good for about 30 amps, but um, it'll actually let you see you know, just how much current the sink can handle. And uh, this is without any heat sinks, mind you. We can open and close the MOSFETs really fast, and uh, for 30 amps, we don't need any heat sinking. None whatsoever. You're probably asking, how can he run, you know, 30 amps without any heat sinking at all? Magic. Nah, not really. Each MOSFET shares the load equally, so it's not even going to see. Oh, each MOSFET probably sees about seven and a half um, amps, something like that. All right, power it up, and you'll be able to see the current go straight up. Okay, all right, 29 amps. We're starting to get the current limiter on the controller. You can keep pushing that up as it heats up; it'll drop the current. So now we're back up to the highest that it can handle. Um, we can see a little bit of smoke starting to come from these wires. But uh, I'm not sure if you better see this. MOSFET. Uh, let's have a look. 39 degrees, 37 degrees. 35 degrees, 37 degrees, 37 degrees, 37 degrees. So all the MOSFETs are quite quite easily sharing the load and they're all up around the 37 degree mark which means they're all doing the same amount of work. 
you can see my um, my wires from my power supply are having a little bit of trouble here. But um, ouch. just turn it right down and uh, get those wires pulled down ouch, a little bit. But um, yeah, you could run this. This isn't even the, the MOSFETs that we'll end up using. I look at that, I can still put my fingers in that quite comfortably. Not even hot. Just, I mean, slightly warm, and that's 30 amps. Um, you'd probably be able to run this at about uh, 50 amps without heat sinks with the production version. That's 50 amps without any heat sinks whatsoever. But when I put together these controls, I really like to. Um, I don't like the idea of using fans because the way I look at it, I don't always know where people are going to install these things. I mean, I've seen them in trolling motors, I've seen them in, um, you know, virtually any application you can think of, there's, well, where there's use for a motor control, I've seen them used. So, some of the conditions of fans are really, really bad idea. So, I decided to build something that you can either, you know, you've got the choice whether you want heat sinks or not. If it's, if your current limit's going to be, I guess, less than 50 amps or around 50 amps, you're about to run this without a heat sink, no problem. Um, I'll hook up the scope so you can have a look at the, uh, have a look at the PWM. Alright, this is a good motor to do this with because it's not very healthy. And lean on. Hook up to our ground. Hook up to our gate. Uh, which one's it then? Arms. Okay. Um. You can see the frequency adjust. You can actually hear that as well. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but um, I certainly can. So we can go from it's actually probably lower than um, 100 hertz, and we can move that all the way up to 1.1.3 kilohertz, which is pretty much roughly where we want it to be. Um, I'll show you this so we can see the MOSFET rising four times. Alright, the rise time is about on average about 1.8 microseconds between 1.6 and 1.8 um, if you want to check the full time full time is 1.8 microseconds that's the time it takes to close the MOSFETs and um, considering we're running four MOSFETs here that's very impressive. It's basically flicking between 1.5 microseconds and 1.65 microseconds. That's incredibly fast. I mean, you, you can't really get much more efficient than that. Um, the more MOSFET you add, the longer it takes. So that's that's pretty good. This, con this controller will be probably available next month. Um, I finalised most of the testing on it, so uh, yeah, that's basically it. Any information you can have a look at our website, it's www.motiondynamics.com.au.